Deadheads the world over today are mourning the death of Jerry Garcia, the heart and soul of the Grateful Dead. NBC's George Lewis looks back on the life of a man whose music first symbolized the 60s, then transcended several generations, and ultimately inspired millions. For legions of Grateful Dead fans, Jerry Garcia was much more than a rock star. He was a musical guru, a rock and roll pied piper who inspired thousands of so-called deadheads to spend their lives following him and his band from one show to the next. Garcia first became interested in a career in music as a teenager growing up in San Francisco. In 1965, he formed a rock band called The Warlocks, which a year later became The Grateful Dead. With Garcia at the helm, the self-described band of misfits rocketed to fame, mesmerizing the counterculture generation with their psychedelic style and sound. You know, we were the first weird people that a lot of those people ever saw. But Garcia's popularity did not fade away with the 60s. In the 90s, the Grateful Dead was still a top concert draw as millions of tie-dye clad fans, both young and old, flocked to their sold out shows. For the first half of this year, they were the second biggest touring act in the country after the Eagles. It works because of the difference in everybody's perspective of what the music is supposed to be like. Since we all see it from differently, you know, it's one of those things. It's, uh, it, it, but we all know it when, when it happens. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that. It's like a thing you recognize. That's what we've come to over the years. And the dead are now appearing in the newest of media, the computer CD-ROM. We would all like to be able to live an uncluttered life, a simple life, a good life, you know, and like think about moving the whole human race ahead a step or a few steps. And, or a half uh, a step. Yeah, or a half a step or anything. Lord, and leave the Towards the end of his life, the grueling tour schedules, the cigarettes, the drugs, the overeating and the alcohol took their toll on Garcia. At times, concerts were canceled because of his poor health. Last night, Garcia was remembered for his music in candlelight vigils across the country. We do this because of his music. He brings us together in harmony and uh, peace. We all loved him and we all loved his music. We all just wanted to come out here and show him a little respect. For Jerry Garcia, it was indeed a long, strange trip. But to his fans, it was not nearly long enough. For today, George Lewis, NBC News, Los Angeles. Dennis McNally is the longtime publicist of the Grateful Dead, a close friend of Jerry Garcia's. He's in San Francisco at our affiliate KRON TV. Mr. McNally, good morning. Good morning, Brian. Deaths are always um, untimely. Were you aware that he had the, the kind of health problems? as serious as they were that he obviously did? Well, we fussed and, and worried about him for a long time. Uh, the, the, the depth of them, no. Um, we knew since, in particular since 1992, when we canceled some shows, that his diabetes was right on the edge of things, and in general, that he really needed to take very meticulous care of himself, which was not really his style. He was not a very meticulous person, except as to music. So that it was one of those things we, we sat and fidgeted about, and he always shrugged off any you know, concern uh, and, you know, it, it was, in fact, uh, you know, the, the changes that he did make were, in fact, perhaps too little too late. Yeah, we're talking about lifestyle changes. Yes, I mean, and since 1992, he'd lost 60 pounds. He exercised pretty regularly. His smoking was at least down to, you know, five or ten uh, uh, filtered cigarettes instead of three packs of uh, Camel Straits. Uh, in general, he watched his diet, but, you know, it was never 100%. It was, he, always, yeah. he always cheated a little. What do you think made him so special and so revered among, his, among uh, music fans, fans of the Grateful Dead? Well, a couple of things. I mean, the style of the Grateful Dead was, it was really set by him. He was authentically charismatic, but he wouldn't lead. He wouldn't dominate. So that uh, he, if he led, he led by example only. And, and it was that looseness that defined the, uh, the audience scene and made it the compassionate and tolerant place it is and made it the unique phenomenon that it is. In addition, he was truly committed to improvisation, to a group, um, interactive, uh, not one leader, uh, music, musical approach. And in, in that approach, 
there was this tremendous risk. You, you, you flew and sometimes you crash, sometimes you fly when you start leaping off cliffs. But um, where in that moment between the time you, you take off and the time you uh, find out whether you're succeeding or not, there's magic, there's a potential for wonderful things. And he had authentic faith in that. And the audience did too. And that's, that's why they're still around. He leaves behind a wife whom we married just last year and, and, and four daughters, one as young as, as six years old. How mm -hmm. are they this morning? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I, I know that I got a very lovely uh, message from uh, his wife last night late, um, thanking me for something I'd said and asking we needed to speak today. Um, they're, you know, they're, we're devastated, we're all devastated, and, and, and they are too, but we'll, you know, we will get by. To He's, he's not the first of the original members of the band to, to pass away. Um, the remaining members, how are they viewing their future? Well, at this point, it's one of those things where it, it's, decisions don't yet have to be made, so they haven't been made. I, at the moment, everyone's a little more concerned with grieving and, and with, with dealing with what we have to deal with than making any plans. The Grateful Dead were never too strong on making plans in the first place. So the answer is, at this point, it's sort of been a suspended animation. Ultimately, um, although, although you may want to put the decision off, will you allow that it's, it's hard to imagine a Grateful Dead without Jerry Garcia? I'll allow that, yes. I mean, whatever, whatever comes out of this, it won't be the same phenomenon, it won't be the same uh, band. Uh, each, each band member has a great deal to contribute and, and always has and, and, and will in the future. But yes, uh, whatever is going to come of this, it, it won't be the same. Dennis McNally, I know it's a tough time. Thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's 741. We're back after this. I said I was running, but I took my time. A friend of the devil is a friend of mine. I get home before daylight. Just might get some sleep tonight. Jerry Garcia, leader of the Grateful Dead for more than 30 years, is being mourned by deadheads around the world this morning. Garcia died of a heart attack yesterday at the age of 53. As the sad news was learned, fans gathered to remember Garcia at Strawberry Fields, the John Lennon Memorial in New York's Central Park. The mood was much the same in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district, where Garcia and the dead began their trip into rock and roll history. John Blackstone reports on Garcia's life and times. Near the birthplace of the hippies in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, hundreds gathered to remember Jerry Garcia, not just the leader of the Grateful Dead, the leader of a tribe. I'm getting choked up as I say this, but it's connected us all together, you know? It's a really cool thing. I loved him so. <laughs> Though Jerry Garcia had a long battle with drug use and looked more like a rumpled grandfather than a rock star, his band's popularity just kept growing. Through his music, Garcia shared with a new generation the spirit of the 60s, the roots of the Grateful Dead. Danger we would all like to be able to live an uncluttered life, a simple life, a good life, you know, and like think about moving the whole human race ahead a step. They represented uh, a time and place uh, that went by very quickly um, when there was some real optimism and some real sense that, that values could be changed that would make lives better. Bob Weir of the Grateful Dead says Garcia did make lives better. His life was a far more a blessing for all of us. Garcia's music will live on in recordings, but his love was spontaneous live performance. I will get by. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco.